Hello and welcome back to another video. So my name's Lou and this is In The Bag Tropical Fish UK and this is the fish room. This is the current fish room anyway. Um, this is a very well insulated shed that I built a couple of years ago with my family um, and it served me very well. But um, as you can see, I don't have very much space left um, because I have a couple of really big fish and I've also got an awful lot of tanks. Now I recently moved house into my grandparents' old house and um, very luckily there was quite a large workshop there. It was amazing. Well, when I say amazing, uh, <laughs> it, it had potential, that was for sure. Um, but years and years of uh, wood turning had covered the whole place in a thick layer of dust and varnish, there was stuff everywhere. Um, the whole place needed insulation. Um, it all needed boarding up. And there was just a lot of spiders. There was uh, an infestation of these um, silk moth larvae. Um, not silk moth, wax moths. And a lot of stuff to move, a lot. So before I could uh, get cracking on the fun stuff, uh, moving tanks, aquascaping, getting my own fish all set up really nicely in their permanent digs, um, we had a bit of work to do. So we took it one wall at a time and essentially what we needed to do was tidy up, insulate it, board it up and then um, sort the electrics out which needed to come slightly away from the wall. So the insulation gets cut to size, as is the boards, gets pushed up against the wall and then screwed directly into the wall with some big old screws. Um, that's if you don't want it all sh uh, silver and shiny like a spaceship, uh, but I had it boarded up and then it needs a coat of paint. Hello, hello, welcome back uh, to the fish room. Except this isn't the fish room, this is the new fish workshop. As you can see, it's called a workshop because <laughs> that's what it used to be. Um, so, believe it or not, this is actually uh, looking a lot better than it did uh, when we first started. Um, and this bit over here is pretty much boarded up and ready to go. So you can see we've got the insulation in there, um, the electrics are up, the workbenches are all clean. And then, yeah, obviously it goes all the way to the end there and we've got some um, bits of heavy machinery and things that still need to move and then behind this insulation here is just like a bunch of wood and some shelves that need moving. It, the building is actually an L shape. Um, I don't know whether you can see but yeah it is actually an L shape and it goes like it's, it's an L shape there. So and we've got windows so it's going to be a little bit brighter this time around. Um, and yeah, I'm just generally thinking I'm going to go a little bit more sort of like modern with the look. Um, quite fresh. I'm sort of thinking sort of like Caribbean vibes. You know, just water rippling, nice beachy vibes, lots of sunshine. You know, make it light and airy in here. So I have started uh, painting the workbenches. I was going to do the white just to start with. I'm only doing the tops. I'm not worrying about the legs because I want to keep the legs original because um, they do actually match on both workbenches. Um, it's going to be mostly my personal tanks and like a packing area on these. And I'm going to start with my personal tanks um, in here just to test it out and actually see if everything's working type thing. Start with my own fish instead of the shop fish. Um, but I need to finish painting. So I've got that one still to do. This one needs a second coat. Now this had loads of wood stain and stuff on it. And it looks like the paint has pulled that to the surface. So I don't know whether that's gonna be an issue or not. It doesn't look too bad. And to be fair, the front piece looks like it's come up nicely. I don't know whether the second coat is gonna work, if it's gonna go over that, or whether I'm gonna need to go over the front with maybe um, a more heavy duty paint or something, but it does seem that the varnish hasn't actually sealed the wood and the paint has actually stuck, which is a good start because there was all sorts on this. Um, essentially, this used to be my granddad's workshop. Um, so this used to be a wood turning workshop, which is what you can see here. Um, they're all going, so I can put some fish tanks there. Um, and yeah, the whole thing was very, very dusty. 
and full of stuff absolutely full of stuff and as you can see we've got halfway through and there's still a lot of stuff in here that needs to come out but two walls are insulated which means I can start painting um, so I'm gonna get cracking on that and then hopefully um, in the next couple of days we will start on the next bit um, and do some more work uh, on the insulation and stuff and then most once most of the walls are up because it's quite warm at the moment I should be able to just pop a heater in here and it won't be too bad um, or I can individually insulate the tanks um, but I do need most of the dust and most of the rubbish out of the way before I put tanks in here otherwise I'm just going to be scooping stuff up all the time so let's get started on the next layer of paint on these workbenches and then I want to get the walls painted as well See, I've got to include at least one clip of me doing all the hard work. See, look, this is proof I can paint a bench. So I, I am just using a white emulsion paint for this um, and doing it very quickly. All right, so I've made a start and I did actually put a second coat on this end workbench here, um, this long workbench, and you can see I've laid that on really thick there and actually over by the um, clamp as well. I've laid that on really, really thick and the paint is just pulling the varnish straight out of the wood. So rather than wait, waste loads of paint, I'm just gonna um, leave it, it's fine. You're, you're not gonna notice it anyway because the tanks are gonna be up at the top here and you know, I'll, I'll hide that. I'll put some hooks there and have some nets there or something, you know, and you're not going to notice it, but I don't really want to keep wasting loads of paint just to end up with off-white workbenches anyway. Um, but I did this one as well, and I've also done underneath it, sloppily, um, but I have put a coat underneath it, because um, uh, I am going to have tanks below these, uh, so you are going to see that wall um, to a certain extent, so yeah, I've done at least one coat. So, I was thinking, I, I think this wall is going to be white, and then that wall there, I'm thinking of doing like a nice tropical ocean blue color. Um, in fact, the color I have is Ocean Drive. Uh, that is from Wix. It was 15 pounds for the two and a half liters. Um, so that's what I would like to do there. The room is probably gonna be mostly white. Um, as much as I can because of reflections and things. White isn't the best when it comes to fish tanks because of reflections, but what I was finding in my current fish room is there's tanks, uh, opposite tanks anyway, and it kind of depends on where you are in the room more than anything. So I might have to get some sort of screen thingy that goes in front of the tanks or something, which might work a little bit better. And then let's focus on the overall sort of aesthetics of the room anyway, because look, we've got lovely big windows, you know, it's very nice here, we're in the garden, and I wanted to really capitalise that. And to be honest, with the windows, there's not actually too much wall to paint, um, but obviously these other walls still need boarding up, so we've got the, the insulation, which as you can see is the proper thick stuff. Um, I've gone thicker than the last fish room, actually. Um, and then the, the board, just to finish it all off. And then the ceiling, I'm going to have to get up there and put some sheep's wool in it. Um, but I'm not doing the ceiling with the expensive uh, silvery reflective stuff because it's, whew, that'd be expensive. Um, and then there's a crack in the wall, so that needs sorting out as well. Um, but yeah, uh, we're making progress and I think this is going to look quite smart if it all comes together like it is in the vision in my head. Um, it is quite nice having sort of pre-made workbenches that are perfect for holding very, very heavy tanks because these are solid as anything. Um, and I'm, I'm not too sad about them still looking like workbenches, to be honest, because they were my granddad's and, you know, many, many hours were spent carving stuff away and chipping away at stuff, especially right there. So, um, I'm not too sad about making them, not making them look brand new type thing. But, uh, I have a lot of work to do still. And I don't know about the ceiling yet either. The ceiling will probably end up being white as well. Uh, which, to be honest, I should really probably paint that before anything else. But uh, it might end up that the ceiling doesn't get painted, actually, to be fair. Um, we will have to see. Um, I'm pretty sure I could put some dust sheets down and try and be careful. But um, with my experience painting ceilings, I normally get it everywhere and all over me, especially if I'm using a roller. So, yeah, it might have to be the ceiling doesn't get painted because um, I want to get these walls done. 
before the rest of the stuff happens. And there's a drain as well, which you can just about see. There is a drain down there as well, which is very cool. I can uh, put water straight down in that and it soaks away. So um, it's already a little bit more flood proof than the last one, a little bit. No fish room is completely flood proof and there will be floods, but oh well. Right, we always seem to have to break a couple of eggs to uh, make an omelette with these types of uh, products, but despite the uh, new mess um, that I need to sort out, check this out, look. Ooh, all except that wall are insulated now. And just a little bit of boarding up to do um, up at this end corner, but this end corner is transformed. This is looking amazing over here. So my job for today is as much as I can get to. Um, all of this wood up here, I'd like to try and make placker caves out of. Now obviously because they're wood, I'm gonna have to soak them for quite a while. Um, but I have a drill, a big old drill that I can use to sort of drill down into them and hollow them out. So I was thinking of chopping them up into different lengths and uh, you know, there's a couple of them that my granddad had turned. Most of them are like holly. Um, but yeah, that, that I could drill down into and that would probably make quite a good little pleco cave. They're all quite thick, but um, obviously I don't have to make the hole that wide. Um, I might even be able to get like two holes in them type thing. So um, some of them are a bit better. Um, that one says holly, oh no, hornbeam, uh, that one. Um, that one says holly, and I don't know whether that means that this was actually chopped down in 87. It does feel very dry, but um, I don't know. Um, all these bits of wood will probably have a bit of a story to them. Because he was a wood turner, my granddad, he, um, obviously there's character to the wood, so you can see where there's different stripes and things, and different, you know, features of the wood um, that I can tell he'd, he'd kept that, oh, that was blue. Um, he'd kept that bit for that particular reason because of a feature of the wood that he was enjoying about it um but yeah so like this one here's got that there nice nice knots in them and things like that so but anyway job for today going off on a bit of a tangent get all of this down off these shelves and get everything covered up because i would like to at least get that wall and that wall painted today. Um, and if I can, I'll do this little alcove as well. So I sat down, um, and I will show you the plan, but I basically sat down and did a plan um, of what I want to do, which the stepped rack that's at the end of the current fish room is gonna go there now, instead of me having ponds there. That's gonna be the stepped rack there. Then the other racks I have are go gonna go in like a U shape here. Um, mainly because I don't really want tanks stacked up in front of the windows because I want to maximize the natural light because I want to grow algae but for being on camera and stuff like that and just general maintenance I think it's going to be a right pain having a rack in front of a, a window so I was going to probably have some tanks with backgrounds on that rack and then try and get the rest of them in like a U shape here and then my personal tanks are going to go on here um, so when you walk in, these are going to be like the really nice displays up this wall with packing area and things. Then because these workbenches are like hench, like really, really hench, what I'm going to do is I'm going to board off the bottoms of them and turn these into ponds and basically have the net going from where I'm boarding it off upwards. So that's where the arowana and the snakehead are going to go. So, uh, the arowana is going to end up with something like eight foot of swimming space so he's going to get an upgrade and then the snake head is going to get about six or seven foot underneath that. Agatha is going to go in a galvanized steel bath that's uh, like six foot long so she's going to love that and then I think what I'm probably going to do is um, everyone who's currently in the pond is probably going to be going in one of my five foots that I am going to move up here. It'll probably be the one that Phoenix is in, the big wide one um, but I don't know yet. I might end up doing something different with those guys um, once everyone's in and I can see what needs doing because I think that pond and the seven foot will be the last things to sort out because I need to get rid of that seven foot because um, I'm not moving it again, <laughs> basically. 
Um, but I do also have these... Um, you know, this is just like an old table that I can use to like do packing area and stuff. That is quite a nice um, sideboard, um, and it'd be quite nice to have that for you know storage and stuff as well. But I have had tanks on that in the past as well, so I can use that maybe sort of in the entrance here. But anyway, as you can see, I've got a lot of work to get on with. I don't even know if the camera's going to pick it up. I swear this... I've, I've gone and picked up a different uh, tub of white. I didn't need such a big tub. And before I was using the crown white emulsion. Um, and I swear this one I've picked up from being cute. I swear it's a different colour white. It says white matte. But now I know it dries lighter, but it just looks... It looks warm. I don't know. Mm. I might end up having to go over the first wall I did. Um, and we'll see what it looks like once it's dried. Now I've done one layer of the crown on this. And then I'm going over it with the um, the b &Q, <laughs> It's just called interior paint. Um, it was £11 for the big tub, which I thought was really good value actually. Um, but yeah. This is going to be interesting, um, but as you can see, I finished the turquoise wall. I still need to go over, obviously, I'm not concerned about going over white paint uh, with the turquoise because the turquoise just destroys all pigment. Um, it goes over, it is like permanent um, and it, yeah, so I'm not worried about the edging. Um, it was more important not to get the turquoise on the white bits because it will show through too much. Um, and yeah, I've got some edging to do still, but obviously it's a workshop. Um, and you're not going to see a lot of these bits. And yeah, it's it's still a workshop at the end of the day. So it's not going to be my best. I haven't used any tape or anything. I have not really put much effort into making sure it's really tidy in the corners. But I do want a good layer of paint on there. Um, so that it, it does at least look like I've made an effort. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to have to see how this dries. Because I swear that is... I mean, it's drying a little bit in the middle there. And I swear it's warmer interesting because the other white was a very very crispy bright white the um the white on that wall over there um but yeah as you can see there's still quite a lot to do um but we've made a lot of progress since um where it was uh so these two lathes are going um my cousin is probably having that one um and the blue one still needs a home um so uh, we're just sort of it's such a niche thing it's kind of like a really big fish tank really because it's really heavy and it's very niche and you've got to have enough space to like be able to pick obviously it comes up into bits it does come apart to a certain extent um but yeah you've got to like have somewhere to put it and know how to use it because they're bloody dangerous as far as I know like my husband's told me one wrong move and the whole thing can just like go bang in your face uh, which sounds like a lot of fun I suppose fish tanks are kind of like that to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, so um, once I've got not got too distracted talking to you guys and once I've got this wall painted, um, Steve's tank is that lovely Roma 200 that I have here. Um, just letting it warm up because I filled it up yesterday and I stuck my hand in there this morning to clean the glass and it is really cold. Um, so I'm probably going to pop a heater in there later, um, but that does need to be scaped um, and ready for a fish by tomorrow. Um, and I might have to pop another f uh, filter in there as well because I reckon it's too cold for the bacteria on that seeded filter. So I'm thinking I've probably um, wiped that filter out now because it's just too cold. Um, I couldn't tell you how many degrees it is in there, but it's cold. Um, and then I've got Agatha's bath as well. So basically, Agatha and Steve need to move first because Steve has got another tank this size all to himself that I moved him into in the last video. I need him out of there so that everyone in one of the tanks on the main rack can go into his tank. He needs to be in here and then I need Agatha out as well because then I can move everyone out of the main rack at the end um, into other tanks that I've got free and then I can drain those tanks out and get that rack moved. Which then means I can move I can get those tanks set up and then I can move everyone into those tanks and then I can take my time dismantling the last of the tanks which is then going to be empty and recycled ready for the next delivery. 
in an ideal world. That's the plan anyway. But Agatha and Steve need to move first. Um, so I am going to be escaping this tank in the next video. And I'm thinking what I want to do is some sort of island, sort of Maldives, um, sort of Indonesia, Sri Lanka themed tropical vibes. Um, Steve is obviously from that sort of part of the world, but his natural habitat would be more like landfill um, because of the specific rivers he's from. Um, but he's never really had like a really nice aquascape tank. So, um, and because he's quite shy, the tank needs to sort of stand out in and of itself without being able to see the fish. Um, so hopefully I can pull that off. And then Agatha is probably gonna have this mostly to herself. I might have to put the big jibiceps in with her because it doesn't really play nice with all the big plecos. Um, so it'll probably be Agatha and the jibiceps in here and you know, she'll just have a heat lamp and um, probably a little bubbler in there as well. Um, and she can just chill. She's basically got what a lot of people have for their snapping turtles, but um, for a tiny little musk turtle. So she'll be enjoying life in there. Um, it is quite a big bath. It's like four and a half foot, I think. So that's a good size and almost two foot wide. Um, it's certainly big enough that I could get in there and have a bath if I wanted to. Um, not that I do, because I think that's probably quite cold as well. Um, so yeah, need to warm these two up. And then you will see in the next video what I'm going to be doing with these. And then I need to get this wall painted and everything else just tidied up a little bit. Um, and this wall insulation needs to go in the attic because it's not holding temperature in here at all. Like very well at all. It's not too bad, but when I left yesterday, it was about 18 degrees in here. When I came in this morning, it was around 15, 16. So heat is getting out somewhere. Um, and I think I'm probably also going to need some blinds or something to keep the heat in, in the windows because they are only single pane. Um, so it might be that I need some curtains or something. Um, and yeah, do you like that sign? <laughs> I thought that was quite fun. That was here when we got here. Um, it's obviously off a building site or something. But anyway, I need to stop procrastinating and get this wall painted. And then I'm going to move the stuff and try and paint around the leads as well. Um, I have stuff to cover the leads in and I've got some, um, steel wool and paint remover and things. So hopefully I won't get them drenched in paint. Um, but this is the plan. That's the plan. So the rack is going to go in this corner here. Once the saw and the giant hoover thing for all the sawdust from the lathe has gone. Um, luckily that's on wheels. That is very heavy, but that needs to go in husband's garage. Um, so the main rack at the end of the current fish room is going there. This gives you an idea of the scale of this place. So that current rack that fills the whole end of the fish room, it's going there. And instead of having tanks on the top, because I wasn't using them, they're going on the bottom. Um, then I said Roma 125, but that is the 200 actually. So my fast flowing hill stream tank and Steve are going on this bench here, which is hopefully going to give me a little bit of space in the middle, because I quite like that area being a little bit of space. My five foot is probably going to go there even though that was supposed to be a packing area, or the five foot is going on this nice sideboard that I have, and it's gonna go like there as you come in. Um, I just don't know how much it's gonna stick out. So my, my five foot is gonna go there or there. Uh, Phoenix is gonna go under here. I'm gonna board that off, pop a liner in it, build it up, um, and then the same for the Giardini. Now I've split that in two there, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have Giardini is going to have the full length, so he's going to have all eight foot of that. And then Phoenix is going to have all length of that as well, um, going under there. They'll sort of cross over a little bit. Um, caged in. Then the rest of the tanks are going to go in this corner here. So like that, they're going to be there. She says, with all the will in the world, but I really need to paint this wall. So stay tuned. Uh, hopefully I'll have a nice shot of some very nice painted walls and this all looking a little bit more tidy and ready to go in just a second and I will see you in the next video where we're going to get off all of this building fish roomy insulating business and we're going to start having some fun so we need to escape all of my personal tanks um, every single tank going into the rack is going to need escape so I might even be doing like a single video per species um, which will be quite fun. And then I'm also going to be talking through how I'm doing my air system. So there's going to be like an air pump up at the top here with like a circular system 
for this rack and then a circular system for this rack over here as well. So I'll talk you through how to run an air, um, run all of the tanks in the fish room off one system. It's very, very easy to do, um, but it does just need a little bit of extra work on top of, you know, running the airlines to each tank and things, but it'll be a lot tidier. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed uh, our shenanigans turning this into a fish room. Sort of. It's almost there. <laughs>